Hi guys, welcome back to part two. I'm going to continue straight on where I left off from part one. And we basically configured the interfaces for VLAN one and the interfaces for VLAN two. And we set aside the, the group here inside, we set it to a value of 100 being a most trusted network. Whereas the outside interface, because it connects to the internet and it's our external, external facing interface, we set that to zero, so untrusted. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm gonna actually add in a route to tell the, the firewall essentially to route the traffic. If it doesn't know about a destination IP address, to route it out over this interface here. And to, to, to essentially say that this is the next top IP address. So in order to do that, and if we just do a quick test for a moment, let's just take a simple ping message if we go from here PCB over to R1 okay now nothing happened there because we haven't got our little testing up but you can see it immediately failed so what I like to do is I like to go into simulation mode and I just like to have a look at where exactly it got to so if I just click out here and I press go one step at a time so here I can see the message is going from if you like 192.168.1.3 and it's going to a destination of 209.165.200.225. So if I just continue to go here, what we'll see is as we get to the, 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 the ASA, it basically again, it's looking at the inbound and same IP address as the source and the outbound is the same. Now we're gonna see that this changes in a few minutes because we're gonna be doing some network address translation on this outside interface. But you'll notice there, as I press go again, what should happen is it goes across to, for example, this, this router here. But this router, of course, doesn't know how to route it back. The reason being is it's coming back and saying, hey, let's send back the, 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 East, the ICMP response to this 192.168.1.3 address. But of course, it doesn't know that 1.3 address. Why? Because this is an internal private IP address and the ISP wouldn't necessarily know this, okay? These addresses, these class C private addresses are not known on the global internet. And this is what we're simulating here. This is the ISP's network router. Um, it did, however, so again, you know, this, this did work. So, you know, we, we, we managed to get to this router. If we just do another quick test, let's just delete that one for a moment. Let's ping again to maybe router two for a moment and let's watch that. So essentially here goes our ICMP, goes up to the router and now you'll notice that the ASA basically just goes, hey, I don't know, and we get a message to say, I can't send this back. So we're essentially getting an ICMP um, message back from the ASA, the firewall, back to the router. And essentially what this is saying is, sorry, I, I don't know where this network is. Now this network, this interface here, is basically the 10 network. But because the router or the, the firewall doesn't have an entry in its routing table for that network, it won't be able to send it onto this network. So how can I prove this? Well, if, for example, I wanted to see what networks it knows about, usually this would be done using show IP route on a router. However, this route doesn't work on an ASA. What we need to do actually is, it's just slightly shortened, is click on show root. Once I do that, I can see that this the, the, the ASA knows about, if you like, it doesn't have a gateway of last resort set. It knows about some connected networks only. So in other words, it knows about, for example, the 192.168.1 network. This is the network down here, obviously. It knows about, for example, the 209 165 200 network and obviously this is we've subnetted this one out okay but it knows about this one this is this network here and it knows about the um well actually it doesn't know about this network at the moment because we haven't configured the interface we'll do that a little bit later okay it's just showing you um these networks configured here you can see that it's actually broken this down because it's subnetted into the slash 929 that's why we're seeing these entries okay showing the the class c address and then it's showing you the actual subnetted address so why did it not work when we went to because this asa didn't know about the 10 network so how are we going to educate this 
this this far wall to know about that well it's pretty so simple what we'll do is we'll create what's called a static root okay so what we can do is we can go root okay and then what we want to say is we want to say outside so essentially we want to say that we want to root this traffic out of our network and we want to say 0.0.0.0 and 0.0.0.0 okay and this is our default static root that will say any IP address no matter what with any subnet mask I'm going to send it over to my friend 209.165. We'll just make sure we can see this here dot 200 dot 225 now for example once that static root goes in if I go show root if we have a look now we've actually got a gateway of last resort pointing to our ISP router and you'll also notice a new entry down here just basically saying it's a static root with a this is the, this is if you like a gateway of last resort there's the administrative distance of one because the static root is one and it's saying via out this route to go to our next top IP address. Now if I just delete that and do another ping test for a moment, what we should see guys is that hopefully it gets a little bit further now. Now the ping is going to go out, okay, okay so now what it's doing is it's doing it should do an ARP and it's kind of failed so the ARP response should come back. Now hopefully the next time we try and do this, let's try and do one more test, Let's give that another go. It didn't know the ARP address, so let's try that again. So this time we'll ping, and this time it's going out to the router, goes out to the next router. Now this time it will fail. Okay, again it's gonna fail because remember this guy is gonna say, Hey, I've no idea who. So in order for this guy to respond, he's gonna be going, Well, I need to respond back to this address. And these routers don't know because these are public, if you like, these are on the ISP network, but this is private network, so what it's saying is, sorry, I don't know how to get back to this network. So what we're going to do next now, guys, is it's the, it's kind of like the second half of this part three. We're going to do network address translation, where we're going to say to when this guy leaves this outside interface, we're going to change his source IP address of 192.168.1.3, in this case, and we're going to use the interface address of 209.165.200.226 as the source IP address so that when a packet gets to this guy or this guy they'll have a route back to this network and then if they pass it back to the ASA we should be able to then add some configuration to send it back to our PC so that way we can get two-way traffic so let's have a look at that so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up what's called an object group okay and this is kind of this is this is a little bit new because again in routers we don't usually set this up we we usually do it line by line maybe in an access control list but what's nice about an object group is it's con it's a configuration item on an ASA but it refers to one or more items so what we can do is we can add some configuration to basically take into consideration a whole network so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, an object okay network okay so we can have different objects but this in this case we're going to say object network and what i can do is i can specify a word so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say my network is going to be my inside net and i can call this whatever i choose but then i'm going to say i want to make the network the, the subnet so these are the addresses that i want to select in this object so in this case i'm going to say 192 1.0 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and then now what I'm going to say is I'm going to say for these addresses on this 192.168.1 network what I want to do is I want to network address translate these private IP addresses to the outside interface the global public IP address which is 209.165.200.226 so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to say NAT and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use brackets and in this I can use my question mark to show me this but essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to translate my inside addresses which is my 192.168.1 addresses to my outside okay and then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say dynamic okay so again this can be for any private IP address on any of these computers here so again we haven't looked at this guy yet but he'd be on the 192.168.1 network too and then what I'm going to say is 
dynamic interface. And what this is going to essentially say is any of these guys that are starting to communicate out over this, out, it's going out the outside interface, the private IP address will get switched to this public IP address. And what we'll actually do is we'll do some port address translations. So this ASA will take care of noting who's going out as a PCB or as a PC0 in this case, and it will make a note of it so that it knows how to send back the traffic. Once I have that configured, I can then end that configuration. So what will this do for me now? Well, we can actually test this now, guys. We can actually delete this last test. And now what we can do is another quick little test. So here, I'm gonna go from here back to here. And let's watch it again. And let's watch very carefully. So in this case, you can see if I just go in here, it's coming from the 192.168.1.3, same again. It's going to 10.1.1.2, which is this router's interface here, on this router two. But the interesting thing is gonna happen now next, guys. When I click on the next forward packet, watch what the ASA is gonna do. As the packet, if you, if you like, comes into the ASA, the source IP address is 192.168.1.3, but look what it does when it's sending it out now. It's gonna change it to 209.165.200.226. Look at that, guys. That is, you have to say, that's pretty cool. So what we've got is we've got network address translation happening here, okay? And it's obviously changing the source IP address. So what's the ramifications of this? Well, if, as, we, as we fast forward, and as we get back to the router, I failed at R2 the last time. Notice what's gonna happen now, R2, will have an entry, so it should come back. Now, unfortunately, it's gonna hit R1, it's gonna get past the ASA, but it's gonna fail this time. Why is it gonna fail? Because we haven't got our configuration here to allow an ICMP message back in. And what we can actually do, guys, is we can have a look at this. We can go, show not. And what this does is, it shows us, if you like, how this is working. So what we can see is, this is showing us from inside to outside, and it's basically saying, you know, that, that dynamically it's showing, it's, it's changing our inside traffic to this dynamic outside interface IP. But you'll notice here, guys, it says translated hits one. So when our packet went out, it translated, so that was a hit, so that was good. But then when it came back, it basically said, oh, I've got a little bit of a problem allowing that ICMP echo response back in. So we've got to do a little bit more configuration on our side. So let's now, so once we've kind of understood that guys, we've got one, the next thing we need to do is we need to basically have in Packet Tracer, we need to get Packet Tracer to inspect this traffic coming in and out. And in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to set up what's called this M MPF, which is basically this whole idea of, and this is, this is, this is an acronym that's, that's, that, that escapes me at the moment, but that stands for, let's see if I can dig it out here. Um, I don't think it gives us any details of that. It stands for Modular Policy Framework, but that's not so much important, the acronym, guys. What's actually important about this is, what does it actually do? So what this is going to do, guys, is we're gonna set up basically what's called a class map, a policy map, and then a service policy. And you might say, well, what's that? Well, a class map, what that does is, it basically uses a class map to identify traffic. The policy map, what that does then, we're gonna set that up next, it identifies the action to take on the actual traffic. And then the service policy, the step three, if you like, is basically something to use to implement the policy. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is we're gonna actually do this. We're actually, because we're, we're seeing that we don't have full connectivity now, okay, we're going to basically, um, yeah, let's, let's give that a try. So I'm gonna go into my ASA, I'm gonna go into config T, and then I'm gonna to start to configure this class map. So that's our first thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit class map, and it's asking me for a class map na name. So I'm gonna say inspection, and I'm gonna say default. So we're gonna change, because Packet Tracer does not have this MPV policy map in place by default, as a modification, we need to create this default policy map that will perform the inspection on inside to outside traffic 
and then when it's configured correctly it should allow the traffic back in so let's 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 call this inspection default i'm going to say match and this is where i'm going to say i'm going to say default underscore um default inspection and i'm going to say traffic okay and you might say well what do we do then so what i'm doing then is i'm basically now going to map this to what's called a policy map so this is going to be the actions that i want to take place so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say i want to create a policy map mapping it to a global policy and i want the global policy to map to this class inspection default that i uh, created up above so inspection let's get the 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 spelling correct okay once I did that it asked me well what okay so you've got this you've got this class map which is basically saying I want to identify some traffic then you get a policy and you say well what action do you want to take once you identify the traffic so what I want to do is I want to inspect ICMP messages okay and then what I want to do after that is I want to just use a service policy to basically say I want to action this so essentially I want to enforce that when ICMP messages go out keep a note of it and allow them to come back in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the service policy now using that global policy to kind of chain this together okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to now apply that to the global globally so once I've done that, I'm going to run my test again, guys. So I'm going to delete this previous test. I'm going to now send out my traffic. Let's do another quick test out to here. And let's go back. So here we can see, same thing again, should use my default route out. This time it should come back like it did last time. But I'm hoping this time, guys, it failed the last time. This time with the policy map, sorry, the class map, the policy map and then the service policy we can now see that it's actually passing through and if I go back in here now guys and do a show not hopefully we're seeing okay we're still seeing some uh, the translated hits and untranslated hits but I can see from my traffic that that's actually passed through which is which is obviously great news Okay, we're gonna leave it there, guys, because I'm just looking at the time, and I don't want to. I don't want to. That we might need to do to keep going in this configuration. We're gonna need to go on to part three. But what we've just seen there in this, to sum up, we've created a default route on the ASA. We've created some network address translation, and we've created an inspection policy to check the traffic going out. Okay, I hope this you've you know this this has been beneficial for you. Um, thank you for watching and if you want to tune in to part three, I'm going to record that in a couple of minutes where we're going to do DHCP, set up AAA, do some SSH and finally what we're going to do is we're going to try and connect to that web server in the DMZ. Okay guys, thank you very much and chat soon.